You know how stupid I am? Remember back when we were here the first time and I cleared out all these little, like, spinning podium things? Well, I forgot to actually get this one, so now we're gonna get rid of that. Hey guys, Mistmaster1 here, and welcome back to more Kingdom Hearts Final Mix HD Proud Level 1. In the last episode, we made our way all the back, all the way back to Hollow Bastion with the help of Sid's new navigation gummy. Kyrie gave us a nice little good luck charm. We've actually seen a little hint of where Riku is at. He's kind of in like this really dark place that we can't really make out yet. But his spirit, at least what's left of him, is okay. And here now in this episode, we're going to hopefully reascend back up Hollow Bastion and seal the keyhole once and for all in this world. This is a chest I forgot to get the first time we were here in episode 32. If we open this, it contains the mithril. That is very important for synthesis later on. So I'm just making sure I get that now so I don't forget later. But one little quick thing. I actually want to come back through here in the lift stop like in this little part through the library because you guys remember in like episode 30 what 39 i believe it was uh just a few episodes ago for your efforts you can come over here hit this switch and it will actually rotate that little thing over there if you remember from episode 32 we took a very long ride from the library up to another part portion of hollow bastion through a very long elevator ride that actually changes where the end result is going to be for the elevator ride well, now that we've done that, we can actually reascend this little elevator, uh, just like we did the first time, except there's one little twist. Now, once we get up to this little portion right here, it actually takes us to the right side into the, instead of the left side, and this will actually bring us to another secret little place of the lift stop that was inaccessible until now. I could have technically done this in the first visit, or like before I fought Riku, Ansem, and Maleficent, but... It's more convenient to do it now than it was back then, because then I have to do yet another trip all the way back up the castle. And if you take that elevator ride all the way up here, it brings us to the opposite side of where we got the uh, Ramu belt, I believe it was. And now we can lower this chest that was on the opposite side, now that we are on the right side that the chest is located on. Open this chest right here. Get yourself... Oh. The Ramu belt's in this one. Well, uh, I'll... Make a note as to what the other one was in the other thing. Maybe it was an Osmos G. I think it was an Osmos G, actually. I, I apologize for that. I was getting ahead of myself. Anyway, I will meet you back at the library. Alrighty, and now we are back here at the library. Let me just check that Ramu belt really quick that we picked up. You see, it's pretty similar to the... What's it called? Uh, who has that thing equipped? Is it... Uh, it's Goofy. See, Ifrit's belt, if we were to compare Ifrit's... Or Ramu's belt to Ifrit's belt, it has not as much strength, but it has a lot of AP. And it also reduces lightning damage by 40%, whereas Ifrit reduces fire damage by 40%. There is another piece of equipment called the Shiva belt, which we'll be picking up in a few more episodes. Uh, after this, which is actually extremely useful, but more on that later. Oh, God. I've run that phrase into the ground so many times, it's a miracle that I'm still even attempting to remotely say it unironically. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't know any anymore. But yeah, now that all of that is said and done, I took the first few minutes to just get those things situated. And now we are going to reascend back up the castle like we did... This will be actually the third time, because the first trip all I did was get the Royal Crown, the second time was to do the events at Hall of Bastion uh, 1 for real, like all the way to the end, and yes, there I, we had some air soldiers there, but I didn't make note of them, so I didn't get panicky. Uh, yeah. Now we're going to reascend up at a third time. Now be very careful in this little part right here. Uh, what you're going to want to do is move really quickly. Get on this little elevator thing right here and move all the way over to this little platform on the side. And if you're very quick, very few enemies will follow you over. Or if you're very fortunate, none at all. Uh, in this case, I got myself a wyvern that I have to take care of, but that's not that big of a deal. He's over the pit. I'm going to wait for him to come over here. Okay, that's fine. If I just so long as I don't fall off here, that's good. Okay, let's use a Gravira to bring him down. Oh, don't get out of the way. Okay, that that works, I guess. What in the world? Uh, I don't know what's happening right now. Okay, that works, I guess. Okay, that was really awkward, but it worked out. Oh uh, yeah, air soldiers and wyverns can spawn there, and be very careful if you're moving back over here. If you touch, oh god, there's another wyvern over there. What? Why? I didn't sign up for this. Please go away. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if you touch the little area that's just to the left of that switch right there, you'll spawn more Heartless, and you'll get some Air Soldiers, some Red Nocturnes, some Wyverns, you don't want to deal with that. Let's just, uh, 
Let's ride this elevator up before more of them come our way. That was a bit sketchy. <laughs> There's another wyvern right across the little podium there. That was really funny, actually. Now, important thing to note, the, there's this this little fight right here is the main reason I've actually decided to bring Beast along with me. Because he has this ability called Furious Bellow, which knocks out surrounding enemies with a raging bellow. And this will actually create the little stun status on them like Sonic Blade would. This little thing right here that we use on Lock, Shock, and Barrel in Halloween Town. And his default customization is is set so he uses that attack pretty frequently. I will probably be using a stop for this next little thing right here, but just be warned that this little fight right here is a lot more difficult than it was the first time you were around here. In fact, I'm gonna be I'm gonna try to be ultra safe. Actually, no, it's not even worth it. We'll just take more damage, but just be careful. You're getting some air soldiers, some yellow operas, and a wizard to spawn in here this time around. And if these could help me out, I'll use a stop to you know get things initiated here. Uh, it would be really nice if he could actually use that move because he hasn't done anything yet so far. Okay, maybe you can just do absolutely nothing. That works too. Beast, I brought you along for one reason and, well, okay, he did it that time, so that's good. Let me, uh, okay, thank you all for the heal. But yeah, Stop is a really good friend of yours in this little instance right here. Deal with everything else. Let's get that yellow opera out of the way. Now let's focus on that uh, wizard. Uh, let's do the same one-two sort of looping. Oh, what? I missed my attack? That's lame. Oh my god, how long is the yellow opera gonna be stopped for? Good lord. What? How is it? What? Why? What? Why? 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 What? Is this guy like stuck permanently? Holy moly. He's... Oh. That was so long. How did he... I didn't even realize that they could be stopped that long. Holy crap. I thought like I glitched the game. That's how long the guy was stopped for. Or did I... I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just imagining things. But be very careful in that fight. We have some air soldiers, a wizard, some yellow operas. They're very easy to get overwhelmed. Stop is your best friend. Gravity is your be best friend. While I'm here, I may as well actually customize Gravira onto my little triangle thing there because Gravity and Stop are going to prove to be much more useful spells now that we are... I'm going to at least call it this, so we have now officially entered late game. Now that we have completed the first Hall of Bastion visit, this is the second Hall of Bastion visit, and now we are just going to initiate endgame like so. We kind of did in the last episode, but this is the first real episode where we're actually dealing with enemies in terms of combat, where the whole late game battle level... You know, just in general, stronger enemies that start appearing sort of applies. So, yeah, there you go. We've seen all this stuff before, but thankfully, now that you've ran through it once, it's not really any much... It's pretty much shorter, actually, this time around, because I've already explained every single thing that there is to explain. The only other thing would be that there's more Heartless around, and stronger variations of said Heartless. But apart from that, the whole pathway to, you know, the Castle Chapel, the place where we fought Riku the second time, all that stuff is the exact same so bear in mind with just bear with me a little bit keep in mind that this is a little bit tedious just having to show this whole place over again there's some air soldiers here let's not bother with those guys juke that one there we go but i don't really feel like you're not really getting the whole experience of climbing up hollow bastion again if i were to just cut right to where it is plus that would also make the video fairly short and I'd like to make... It's kind of funny, I've been kind of harping on the whole fact that I don't want to make my videos too long. But now it's sort of getting to the point that now it's sort of free control in terms of what I want to do in each episode. There's not going to be a lot more story stuff left to do. And, you know, there's not a whole bunch I want to accomplish in this episode. In fact, we've already accomplished pretty much everything I want to do. Well, aside from the main little thing that's coming up here. Uh, hey, look, we actually have the Disney princesses. They're finally free. Good lord, Alice is so short compared to the rest of them. Hey, there's Jasmine again. Sora, please hurry. Darkness is pouring from the keyhole. It's all we can do... Oh, it's all we can do just to hold back the darkness. I don't know how long we can manage even that. Alright, I'm on my way. So, yeah... We're counting on you, Keyblade Master. In the meantime, we'll do what we can, too. This is... These are all the Disney princesses that, you know, had the purest of hearts to unlock the keyhole. Or at least give power to unlock the keyhole of Fall of Bastion. Can you feel the immense power flowing from that keyhole? They each have one little line of dialogue to say. Please hurry, your strength is running out. And what do you have to say? <laughs> Beast is obscuring her, that's great. We must close the keyhole before it's too late. Well, the keyhole is only a few rooms away from here, so we don't have to worry about it too much. And here we have some more of them. This is Sleeping Beauty and Cinderella. Uh, we've been waiting for you, Keyblade Master. Where's Ansem? Oh, that's right. We... He's gone? What? How? When the keyhole hole appeared, darkness poured out of it. I had like a stroke when I was trying to say keyhole there. That was good. It swallowed Ansem and he disappeared. Though Ansem is gone, the flood of darkness hasn't stopped. We're working together to hold it back. I cannot forget the look on his face. As the darkness engulfed him, he was smiling. Ugh, that's really creepy, actually. 
I don't think Ansem will ever return. Ansem has ignored us since the keyhole appeared. Wow. So, we have her. So, well, Kairi was obviously one of the princesses. She is back in Traverse Town. We saw Belle, who was back in the library. And here are the other five. Here's Jasmine, Snow White, Alice, Cinderella, and Sleeping Beauty. And all together, they form the whole group of purest of hearts need to seal, or at least give the power to seal the keyhole. So, we're going to get that out of the way. We accomplished that in the first visit. We're going to finish the job by sealing the keyhole this time around. I'm actually going to take out this little defender that's right here this time around because, oh god, please don't fall off. Okay, I wanted to be safe right there, so, oh, speaking of being safe, that didn't really work out too well. Uh, because there's something else I'd like to acknowledge just really quick. I forgot to show this off in the first visit, but if you actually look up in Hollow Bastion, wow, you can see the lighting effect too. You see, like, all these beautiful glass panes that create the little fixture on the ceiling here, and that's the whole top of the castle that we're at right now. You could have also viewed it from the little in-the-middle part, center part right there when we ride, ride up the elevator and stuff, but just to show that off, it even has that nice little lighting effect. A really beautiful thing that a lot of people don't seem to get from this game, because who, honestly, how many people do you know that actually go in first person and actually look up there? But yeah, that's up there, and it's really pretty looking. A nice little aesthetic that's kind of missed from a lot of people. I just wanted to show that off. Moving back here, we have now entered this place again, the Grand Hall where we fought Riku the first time. I'm just going to explain this really quick. I'm going to move very quickly here. There's going to be a lot of Heartless Waves that spawn in, and I'm going to dodge all the way up to that top left part of the room. I'll explain shortly after, but just note that you want to just move as quick as you can all the way to the left and try to get up to this little part that's over here like so. If we're really quick, we can avoid another Heartless spawn like so. That's good, okay? And now that all of that is set and done, we have actually despawned the Heartless that are over there. Oh, uh, never mind, I lied, okay. Let's see if we can despawn this guy now by coming all the way over here. The little wizard could prove to be a bit of an issue, but hopefully it doesn't. Okay, where is it at now? Okay, now it is at- oh, okay, now- now it has officially disappeared. So now that we've done all that, we're just gonna make our way all the way over here to this chest. Be very careful with your movement here, there's a defender that spawns down there. Moving very carefully, we can make ourselves over to this little chest on the side right here, and inside of it contains our final set of Dalmatians. Puppies number 61, 62, and 63 have now returned home. And now that all of that is set and done, the 101 Dalmatians part of the journal has been completed. All of the Dalmatians in each world have been found, all 99 of them. Uh, in the next episode, after we finish what we have to do here, we'll finally go back and deliver all 99, 99 Dalmatians back to Pongo and Perdita. Coming over here, we can access this little keyblade right here, which is the Oblivion Keyblade up on this center part. And this is a very similar keyblade to Divine Rose, actually, in the fact that it has a lot of strength, but it reduces your max MP by one. And Divine Rose, just in general, is a much better keyblade for this sort of thing. You get one extra MP and two extra offense, two extra strength. In the original non-final mix versions of this game, Oblivion was actually like the second best Keyblade overall in terms of damage output, but they buffed it significantly in this game, uh, Divine Rose that is. Oblivion hasn't been nerfed, but Divine Rose has been buffed ridiculously and it actually has incredible strength now, so that's just a little thing to clear up something. And if you're also careful here as well, uh, you can drop down to this little chest right here, avoiding all types of Heartless uh, fights, and get yourself another Dark Matter. So we're doing pretty well, synthesis-wise, item-wise. We have now picked up every item that Hall of Bastion has to offer, and now that all of that has been set and done, we are just going to make our way all the way up here to the Keyhole, the Dark Depths. This is where the Keyhole resides. Let's go in there. Let's see if we can actually seal the Keyhole of this place once and for all. This is a really cool-looking room, but whoa, hello. It doesn't go without saying, we have a little guardian blocking the keyhole before we can actually seal it. This is Behemoth, a giant little animal heartless. And it's going to start the fight by jumping out at you, so just get out of the way. And this is kind of a fight that's similar, I would compare it to something as Sh Shadow of the Colossus. In terms of just getting on top of the actual enemy itself and attacking it from various points that, you know, require it the damage. Uh, things that Behemoth can do, it can obviously jump around, but it can also do this little charge up attack. It will also like heave and damage you there, but also create these little uh, sort of pink dark ball, like dark energy ball things. So be wary of that. It can also just jump on a whim, like without any warning. Uh, you can tell, oh, well, before I say that, but after a while, you, when you've done damage to it, it'll eventually topple over like this. But be careful, because after a little while, it'll become invincible again. Get away from it, because then it'll send those little beams from the sky down to hurt you. And they are heat-seeking. If you are too close... Oh, let's get off. Yeah, if you're too close to those beams, when they come down, they'll automatically hit you, so be careful about that. He creates another little dark energy ball like so. Let's... Uh, 
Those things can be a little tricky to dodge. I thought I was gonna die right there. That was kind of scary, actually. And that's pretty much the extent of everything that this thing can do. Uh, like I said, he can do just another little jumping attack while you're on top of this guy, so be wary of that. But otherwise, he really can't do a whole lot. And you're pretty much just stuck here doing as much damage as you can before, you know. You can't really do anything much to this guy. Magic doesn't really work very well if you use magic. It'll just disperse and doesn't really do anything. But you can speed this fight up if you actually, like I, we've been doing in this game, is utilize your summons. So right there, as you saw a little while ago, I uh, initiated a little three-hit combo in the air just to get the damage storage going. And since that's everything that this guy can do that we've showcased, now we the whole only point left to do now is to just defeat this guy. And the fastest way to do that would, of course, be to utilize your genie summon. So uh, let's get going on that. Let's have genie do some more damage like so. And if I'm fortunate enough, I'll actually be able to kill this thing. Well, if not, it'll be very close to death otherwise. But if I get a lot of attacks in on this guy right now, he should be dead before genie uh, disperses right here and my magic runs out. So let's keep at it right like so. Doing some really nice damage there. Doesn't look like it. I'm going to hold back just a little bit. And right before Genie goes away, let's have uh, him use a little bit more magic, see if we can get any more damage up on it. Like so, okay. The Behemoth is still standing, that's fine. Uh, this is considered a boss-type enemy. You will see variations of this thing in later parts of the game, even from now, where it's actually considered a normal Heartless, and gravity works really well on this thing. But this is the boss form of Behemoth, so gravity won't really work well. Magic in general is not very good for this thing. You pretty much just have to rely on brute force. Also, when he stomps the ground like that, if you're next to, uh, ooh. And that's the little heaving attack he does as well, where he, if you're on top of him and he does, that actually damages you, it, it damages you as well, so just watch out for that. But that's pretty much everything that Behemoth has to offer. He should be really close to death by now. This fight is a bit tedious, because this is literally all you do in this fight, is just get on top of him, attack his little horn there. Can you please stop doing that? And just basically chip away at him until he's done. Magic, again, doesn't really work well against this guy. Physical hits are the way to go. It's your only real source of damage. And hopefully I can kill him off right here. This fight's kind of been going on for a while. I'd like you to just die right now. There we go, okay. He's not too difficult. Just don't be reckless and impatient with your moves. And for defeating uh, a behemoth, we get ourselves the Omega Arts accessory. Let's finally seal the keyhole, guys. Now let's go and seal that big keyhole. Sora, you did it. Oh, they're here again. I knew I recognized that voice. The whole group's here. What are you guys doing here? We came in Sid's ship. Ah, that makes sense, actually. This is our childhood home. Oh, really? We wanted to see it again. It's in worse shape than I feared. It used to be so peaceful. Don't worry. If we defeat Ansem, all should be restored, including your island. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. That's awesome. But it also means goodbye. Oh, what? What do you mean, goodbye? Once the worlds are restored, they'll all be separate again. Everyone will go back to where they came from. Then I'll visit you guys with my with the gummy ship. It's not that simple. Before all this, you didn't know about the other worlds, right? Because every world w was isolated, impassable walls divided them. The Heartless destroyed those walls, but if the worlds return, so will the walls. Which means gummy ships will be useless. So you're saying we'll never... Oh. We may never meet again, but we'll never forget each other. No matter where we are, our hearts will bring us together again. Besides, I couldn't forget you even if I wanted to. What's that supposed to mean? Sora, good luck. At least they gave us a nice little speech before all this has to go down. But after it, all that, at long last, we've spent a good, you know, like, five, six, seven videos in this place by now. At long last, let's finally seal the keyhole, the Hollow Bastion.
Thank you, Sora. I think the darkness has begun to weaken. But I can feel a powerful darkness growing somewhere far away. It's the heart of the darkness. It must be where Ansem went. Then we'll take the gummy ship and deal with both Ansem and the Heartless. A worthy answer, Keyblade Master. We offer this power to Aedra Battle. And we get ourselves our third level 3 magic of the game. Fyra has been upgraded to Fyraga. Sora, your courage can bring back our worlds. Once the darkness is gone, all should return to its original state. Kyra will be back on the island? Most certainly, and you should be too. I can't go home till I find Riku and the King. Remember that line for actually like the very end of the game, because that's very pertinent to a little thing that people debate about and question, but that line pretty much solidifies things. That is again a big thing that doesn't really mean much until you see pretty much the end of the game, honestly, but yeah, just to throw that out there. Omega Arts, a little accessory that we picked up in the, uh, just now actually. Uh, it's a complete upgrade from a lot of other things. Ifrit Belt, uh, same strength as Ifrit Belt, but it actually gives a lot more strength and more HP on top of the whole little thing. I will figure out what I want to do with that when the time comes, but nah, not right now. When you leave this world now, there's a tournament being held at the Coliseum. The competition's a lot tougher now, so be careful. Yeah, remember that fourth cup I was talking about in Olympus? Now that we've sealed the keyhole, the Hall of Bastion has officially been avail is now available to us, but... I'm not going to tackle that for probably a good five videos. There's a few things I want to get out of the way before we do that, but it's time is coming pretty soon. One thing before I end off this video is I want to go back to the library really quick. Oh yeah, and one more thing before I actually get into like the whole thing with the library. If you happen to be running across this place in Hall of Bastion and you're in either the entrance hall or the grand hall of this place and you see like a little blue misty little figure kind of roaming around and doesn't really look like anything but except like a little power wave that is actually another special heartless but i will be detailing that in a later video so don't worry about that but the reason i've come back here is because now all the group is here and along with bell ansem and maleficent were both possessed by the darkness you know i just don't get it what's so great about the darkness it brings out the worst in people yuffie this is my home but it just doesn't feel like it i don't remember much because i was only a kid yeah what'd you guys say like 10 years ago or something you went to traverse stone or at least you were here 10 years ago there are no heartless here so rest up well yeah now that we've sealed the keyhole we don't really have to worry about that we've got to get rid of the heartless and rebuild this world and that's all that Ky or Kyrie. no <laughs> we're having a little trippy thing like we did in episode 5 when we thought yuffie was Kyrie. no that's yuffie i want to see what bell has to say so many books but not one not one on how to banish the darkness. Maybe it's hopeless. Don't say that, Bell. There's always a way. I turn into a dang heartless myself and I am back and kicking, so don't say that. What is Donald doing over there? Ansem desires the darkness. He thinks it's the source of all power. What nonsense. Darkness may shroud light, but it can never extinguish it. There you go. That's that's a better attitude to have compared to what you just said a minute ago. Sword, don't succumb to the darkness. You and the Keyblade can defeat it. Well, that's what I'm banking on, man. We turn into a heartless, but we came back. Okay, that's all she has to say. Next thing I'm going to do is talk to Leon. There's also Aerith in this place, but I'll talk to her last because she has the important stuff, if you know what I mean. This was once Ansem's castle. He was widely respected as a wise man, but darkness took him. He began experimenting with people's hearts. Oh, God. <laughs> Some wise man. So much suffering and ruin, and now for what? Yeah, tell me about it, man. I've seen the events in this game. Don't even want to know what was going on behind the scenes, like earlier. We thought this was Maleficent's doing, but she was just another puppet of the darkness, just like Ansem. The darkness is our real enemy, but how to beat it? Well, first things first, let's purge every last Heartless we can find. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's what we've been doing this whole game, and we're gonna keep doing that till we reach the end. I won't use my real name until this world is restored. I love that line so much. More, uh, you know... Uh, proof that that it's Leon is not his actual name if you've heard me call him Squall a few times that is why Squall is his real name he has gone with the nickname Leon because his whole name is actually Squall Leonhart but yeah anyway <laughs> that's that's potentially for another time actually if I decide to do that game so let's let's not you know dwell on that but here we have Aerith and she's the most important important person to talk to in this place sorry you should read this read what it's the rest of Ansem's report Maleficent must have collected it and by talking to her, we can obtain Ansem's Report 2, Ansem's Report 4, Ansem's Report 6, and Ansem's Report 10. She gives us four of them for the price of one. How about that? But that's not all. Ansem disappeared when this world fell to the darkness. It was believed he died defending people from the Heartless, but Ansem was the one who brought them here. 
Screwed up, man. And some weights in the darkness, but here's a little light to protect you, Sora. This is also the important reason for uh, Aerith here. If you talk to her, she will actually give you the third level magic of Cure, and Cure has been upgraded to Cure Raga. Not exactly, like, 100% necessary, considering we're level 1, Kira gets the job done. But now you see Kiraga has, like, those little bells that shoot from it. If we use Fire Raga, it has, like, a nice little fireball effect. And, yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for now. We've done everything in this place that I want to do in this video. We still are missing Ansem reports, even after all this time. We're missing Ansem report 8, and there's actually a few more after Ansem's report 10. We still have a few more to track down. But hey, we'll get more of those as the time, as the game progresses. And I think that's going to do it for me for now, guys. So, thank you all for watching. I've been Mr. Master 1. This has been episode 42 of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Final Mix HD Proud Level 1. And in the next episode, we collected all 99 Dalmatians as of this episode. We are going to head back to Traverse Town, deliver all the Dalmatians, and actually do a little something extra to kind of tie up a loose end that I haven't really been attending to for a little while, but now that everything has been set and done, we have now sealed all the keyholes, except for one area. See, the Hollow Bastion keyhole has been sealed, and we also have this new world that uh, Ansem seems to be lurking in. We will be encountering this world in, in two episodes from now, but in the next episode, there's one little side thing I'd like to get out of the way before we actually move on to the last world of the game. That's right, this is the last world of Kingdom Hearts 1, and we'll, we'll, we will be detailing it in two episodes from now. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next episode where we go back to Traverse Town. And that'll be it. Thank you for watching once again. I'll see you next time.